a lot going. He owns a business, and um, and uh, they got a lot. But I offered him to go if he wants. Uh, but we're going to go up there, and they're going to give testimony. These guys are to some of these men at a church of God up there and preach, and just whatever God would lay on their heart to help some of these men coming out of addiction, fighting addiction. We're going to sow into them and. And uh, Justin, I think, was with some of those guys that's now leaders in that. And they, they can hear, you know, his story and what's going on with him and how God's moving in his life and, and David's life and, and, and some, you know, and, and stuff like that. So I encourage you to pray for us on that day, Tuesday, the 22nd. And, um, and, and let's, see, let's see God move up there, man. Let's see some people set free. Amen. So are we online? Hallelujah. Praise God. Good to be in the house tonight. And, uh, man, excited about what God has for you, for us. And uh, I just feel a spirit of, you know, uh, of, of wisdom and a spirit of revelation tonight. And I feel that and I sense that. And uh, most of you are saved in this house. Hopefully, if, if all of you ain't, one of you can be before the night's out. But I believe all of you might be uh, tonight. And so now we're here to get discipled. To get trained up. And uh, so if you'd stretch your hands. Pray for me as I begin to deliver this word to you. So Father we love you. And I submit to you. Holy Ghost. ask you to anoint this service. Anoint this word tonight. Let it bring forth. Uh, by the word and spirit tonight. That's going to change lives tonight. God I thank you that the hearts are prepared to receive your word tonight. That's going to help them and challenge them and change them tonight. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. And amen. Come on, clap for him one more time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter number 13. We're talking about examine yourself. Say that, examine myself. Examine myself. Come on, say examine myself. I want to examine everybody else. When I say examine, I want to examine you. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, not in a bad way or a, a negative way, but sometimes when I start thinking about examining, I'm examining everybody else. It's everybody else's fault. It ain't mine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How many of you have been there? Nobody's ever been there before. We, got, You know, I've been that way. i got stuff going on in my life, and I'm looking at everybody around me. I'm looking at people in my family. I'm looking at my wife. Well, it must be her way she's talking. Yeah, the way she's talking, the way that she's talk, you know, the way that she's doing. I've been there many a times, and I'm looking at everybody else. Come on, I've been doing it many a times. And uh, praise God, but that's what, that's what it's about, growing, developing, learning, maturing. You know, as you mature, see, we begin to see things different. We begin to, he said, when you was a child, you thought as a child, you understood as a child. But when you started to become mature and you started to mature in your ways, you start putting away those childish things and ways of thinking and all that. But we all got to develop and we all got to grow. We're all d different levels of spirituality, different levels of maturity. You know, he even talked about some of the churches here being carnal churches, and they were still in carnal sins, and didn't mean they wasn't Christians. They were still captivated by carnal sins, and um, and there's a lot of that when you're coming up out of the world, right? So, Second Corinthians chapter thirteen, uh, verse three through five, he says, "Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, let me see, let me make sure I'm okay." <clears throat> Which to you word is not weak, but mighty in you, for though he was crucified through weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we are also weak in him, but if we live with him by the power of God toward you, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates? There's a good word, reprobate. I don't want to get into that tonight, but man, that's, that's a powerful word right there. There's a lot of reprobates today. They've been turned over to a reprobate mind. Okay, I'm going to read this in the Amplified. Since you seek forensic proof that Christ is speaking in and through me, he is not weak or ineffective in dealing with you, but powerful within you. For even though he was crucified in weakness, listen to this, yielding himself, Yet he lives resurrected by the power of God his Father, for we too are weak in him, as we, as he was humanly weak. Yet we are alive and well in fellowship with him because of the power of God directed toward you. Now, here's what I wanted to read in the Amplified. Test and evaluate yourselves. Say that, test and evaluate. Test and evaluate. And evaluate. I got a word, and I've been examining myself for days, since yesterday. 
been doing it. I do it a lot, but yesterday I really got a word, and I felt like it's a word for tonight about examining ourselves. Because I can get up here and I can examine you, or I can examine you as your pastor and, and, and all that, but that really ain't going to make a difference, but it's up to you to examine yourself. And here he's talking about, listen, to, to examine and evaluate. Evaluation is very important. And I'm going to get into examination and evaluation here and, and break it down just a little bit. Examine yourselves and evaluate yourself to see and test whether you are in the faith and living your lives as committed believers. See, there's, a, there's, there's something there. Living your lives as committed believers. Committed. Examine yourselves, not me. Now he's telling them they've been examining him. See, this what happened was the Corinthians was looking at Paul and they were like, is that really Christ speaking in him? He said it was Christ in him. He said it was God speaking through him and all that. And I'm just paraphrasing in a way. And see, what he did was he turned it. He said, you're all seeking a proof of Christ speaking in me, whether it's God or not. And, and, and this, he said, but I'm telling you, you better examine yourself. Are you committed? Are you a committed believer? Or where are you at in your walk with God? Where are you at in your life? Where are you at in your relationships? Where are you at in your friendships? Where are you at in your marriage? Where are you you at in your and your father being a father to your kid being a mother to your kid where are you at examine yourself yeah. see he was throwing it back on them you're seeking a proof of Christ in me and, and and I'm telling you to examine yourself see that's what Paul was telling them here to examine yourself and what to see if you're living lives as committed believers and there's there's a there's a sense of believer today that's not a committed believer a lot of them might be watching here we love you to watch online but a lot of people that they've got into this place of complacency they've got into this place of laxation where they say well I'm just going to sit at home instead of being in the house of God under the anointing in fellowship with the believers and they're they're committed to sitting at home and being okay with watching things online which is nothing wrong with that if that's the way you want to you want to you want to watch it but not in when it's in place of coming to the house of God being in fellowship with other believers being under the word where you can have be prayed over prophesied over being in an atmosphere like this that you cannot get through that uh, through that camera there's a difference when you're in the house say that the difference in the house there's a difference when you're in the house there's something you're only going to get in here. And those of you online, you wasn't here, but one of our leaders, one of our teachers asked for prayer. She said, Pastor, can you pray for me? I said, well, are you okay? Do you need to stay back for a minute? She said, no. She said, I just need prayer. I said, well, let's go ahead and pray for you right now. And we took oil. We anointed her in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We prayed for her. All of a sudden, her shoulder was healed in front of everybody. It was loosed, and she was doing this right here. She was completely free from what she was going through. And I said, see, Jesus, the miracle worker, is still in the house. He's still in this place. It's still a place of holiness. This is still a place where God works miracles, where His Spirit is, where faith is. Praise God. And listen, I'm going to tell you something. Faith only comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So you only get faith in your life, in your Christian walk, by being under the preacher and hearing the preached Word of God. That's the only way that faith comes to you. People say, well, I'm lacking in faith. Well, how many times have you been under the preacher this week and listening to the preached Word? that has came from the pulpit how many times did you lay out the last three weeks and you're talking about your faith is low I wonder why your faith is low because you hadn't been in the house if you was in the house and you was committed and you was there and you was listening your faith would be increased and when you go out you're going to go out with your faith increased man that's good preaching pastor come on you know what I have to do? I have to sit under my preachers and listen to my preachers, listen to my apostles and prophets, and let them feed me. Why? So I come back fully charged and equipped and cut up and oil poured in me and cut up and stabbed and all kinds of things. And, but I've got my big boy huggies on and I can take it like a man. I can take it. Why? Because I know that my eternal soul is more important than my feelings. My eternal soul is more important than me getting preached up one side and down the other. Maybe it's because they love me enough, God loves me enough to care about me and care about my soul enough to point out something in my life to say, you know what, you're not doing right. Why don't you line up? Why don't you get it right? And then, and then I can work more in your life. Praise God. Come on. So we have to be under the preached word to be able to increase in our faith. To increase in my faith, I need to hear the preacher. I need to hear the preached word of God. That's why the important times like this, that we're together, that we come together as an appointed time, 
that we are to come in here, we are to expect God to move, we are ex- to expect, be an expectation of not only Him to move, but that He'll use us to be able to deliver something to you that's going to help you. So we're talking about examining ourselves, but, but those things are important because if we're not in the house, it's hard to... All right. Examine yourselves, not me. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves by an ongoing experience that Jesus Christ is in you? Say, He's in me. He's in me. Unless indeed you fail the test and are rejected as a counterfeit. Now right here, this is important. But I hope that you will acknowledge that we do not fail the test, nor are we to be rejected. I'm going to go on a little further because I've done opened up something here. I didn't even realize I was getting into that. But I pray to God that you, that you may do nothing wrong, not so that we in our teaching may appear to be approved, but that you may continue doing what is right, even though we by comparison may seem to have failed. For we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth and the gospel, the good news of salvation. I'm going to read over here in the King James. Therefore I write these things being absent. He was writing this being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. So he was talking about here, though we be repart- he was talking about, but I hope and acknowledge that we do not fail the test, nor are we to be rejected. But I'm talking about examining ourselves. I'm not getting into that tonight on the other. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to stay with that about examining yourselves. When I started thinking about examination, I started, there was something that came to me. When we take our van, we got, we got a van. And it's different when we got the van than it was the other cars that we had. The other cars that we had, we were able to have mechanics work on them. Any, anybody could work on them. But when we got the van, because of the model of it and the year of it, now listen to me. We have to take it to the Nissan plant, which you should, because they've got special computers that, that, that read that computer and they can tell you exactly what's wrong with it. When a light's on, they can hook it to that computer, do a diagnostic test, and they can, they can whittle that thing down and they can tell you exactly what's wrong with it. There was something that happened one day when we took it. Well, this light kept coming on in my wife and something kept telling me, you need to go get that checked. Sometimes we get busy, we get, we, get carried, we get our lives going, we get all kinds of stuff going and we didn't want to stop long enough to take the van because we'd had to take it all the way to Cookville, which is a little ways away and then we'd had to leave it there. We'd had to either get a ride or follow each other and she's in one direction and I'm in another direction. And so we get so busy in our life that we started to let that thing slip because the light was on, there was something telling us there's something not right here. Something's not right. You need to look at it. You need to check it, okay? Now, now it was just a lot, and it wasn't nothing happening. I mean, she had a little, the break was kind of a little bit, you know, but it's just a break. It's just a lot. Don't even know what the light is, okay? It's not an engine, or it wasn't a, might have been an engine. It was an engine light. Not an engine light, but what's this? What's this? this? This is something the Lord brought. We're talking about examining ourselves. This light kept going off. This, this thing kept happening, and I kept knowing something's not right. All of a sudden, something inside me was saying, hey, you better get that checked out. You better get it checked out. Something's not right. Something's not right. Finally, I told us, we need to take that van down there. Well, we took that van down there, and I'm declaring the whole way, you know, hey, Lord, you're our provider. Because <laughs> when you take it to the Nissan plant, it ain't the cheapest thing all the time that there is. You understand? I mean, I took it down there and, and, and had, a, had a $600 fix, and it would just be a couple parts, you know, or something. Rather than if I'd have took it to somebody that worked on them outside of a shop like that and could have got it done for a hundred bucks, you know. But because of that, we have to go to the Nissan plant. And it's better that way. Because they do it right. They know exactly about it. They'll stand by it. But here's what I want to get to about examining yourselves. So we take it down there. He calls me. He says, I've got bad news. I said, well, give it to me. What is it? He said, that light. He said, we've traced it down. And he said what it is, he said it's a it's it's some kind of computer thing, some kind of some kind of like computer module or something that was inside of it. Now listen, it wasn't the motor. But it was a computer, some kind of little computer thing. But this wasn't just this wasn't just a little computer thing. It was a little computer thing. But I was like, give me some numbers. I'm a numbers man. That's my wife. 
Brother Mike, I'm a numbers man. I need some numbers. I'm calculating numbers. That's the way I calculate. I'm a businessman also. I'm, I'm calculating money. I'm calculating numbers. That's the way I'm looking at it. Numbers, 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 numbers. I'm thinking here, this is here, this is here, this is here, this is that. What do we got? Come on. He said, well, this, this part will be about $2,800. I said, $2,800, really? Father, I thank you that I have a supply. I thank you, Lord, that I have a supply. And I'm not trying to camp on the money part, but this lot that was connected to something that was going wrong, after examining the vehicle, even though it wasn't the motor, he said, if, he, I said, well, can I drive it? He said, no, we can't get the part. We've got to get it shipped in until next week. I said, can you give me a loaner? Can you give me a car and replace of it? Well, we can't right now because they're all out. Well, we got a meeting coming up, South Carolina. We need, we need a vehicle. Well, luckily, they provided one. They paid for it and gave it to us and all that. But what I wanted to get at is this. That one thing that was wrong in that van. He said, I can't let you drive it. He said, because if it fails, he said, the whole vehicle's going to fail. The whole thing's going to shut down. And that was connected to something else. And he said, it could cause you to wreck. If that fails, he said, this could happen and this could happen and that car could crash. Because of one computer module, I don't even know, I'm not even get the lingo right, I'm not a mechanic, okay? That's why I got mechanics. I'm not even going to try to be one. I'm not even going to look at YouTube and try to be a mechanic. I'm not going to try to be everything I'm not. Amen. I learned that. You know, I, some people are like that. They want to be everything. They want to do everything. That's okay. The older generation, some of them, my wife's like that. She likes. She wants to do everything. I'm like, I'm believing God for somebody that knows what they're doing in that area to be able to do it. That way I can use my time and my effort in an area that I know that I'm being more effective in what I'm called to do. And I can let them do their part, them do their part, them do their part. And praise God, I've got more time invested in, in what I'm supposed to be doing. Because to me, time is money. I don't know about you, but I can't waste no more time. I heard the brother say that in worship. What are you thankful for? I'm thankful for time. That's what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for another day. Why? Because time is valuable. Time is important. But after examining that van, that red light... I know something's off. I know something's going wrong. Well, if we didn't get that fixed and we would have kept pushing through it, it could have wrecked the whole thing. How many times in our life do we get to a place where God's giving us those red lights and He's saying, something's amiss in my life. Something's going wrong in your life. Something's right here. You need to start examining yourself. You need to start evaluating your situation and what's going on because you might be headed for destruction. You might be headed. I, I'm not prophesying doom to you. I'm saying they might be something you need to get right before you head down a road that you might not come back from the right way. There's so many times in our Christian walk that we push through those red lights. We push through those things when God's saying, no, 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 step back. Examine yourself. Take, a th- take, a, take an inventory of your life. And let me show you, let me show you till you get to the point where you can correct what it is, where you can get freedom and get past it on the other side. See, if we hadn't listened, which we pushed past the red light. We pushed past that for, for day. I, didn't, I forgot about it. All of a sudden I started getting a, getting a gnawing. And my, the Holy Ghost was like a red light, red light. You know, and I'm like, did you take that down there? No. We need to take it. We need to get that, we need to get that checked. We need to get it checked now. And I'm just thinking, my God supplies all my needs. That's all I'm thinking. I mean, that's most of what I'm thinking. You know, I need to get it checked out. But my God, you said you would supply all my needs. Praise God. No matter, no matter what it is, you've got to supply for it. Praise God. No matter what it is, Lord, you're going to make a way. Praise God. Well, there is no way. You've never failed me yet. And you won't fail me. There ain't going to be no yet. He's never failed. He'll never fail you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Sometimes it's us that push past those things and we suffer the consequences of our own choices. And then we say, well, well God, why wasn't you there? He tried to stop you. You wouldn't listen. You kept going. 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 You pushed through. You pushed through. You pushed through. 
And then all of a sudden you fall and you blame God. God, where were you at? No, hey, I tried to stop you. I gave you a choice. I let you choose which way to go. I let you choose where to run. But you kept on going. Instead of examining. Stepping back and examining ourselves. Taking an inventory of my life. Spiritual checkup, I like to call it. You ain't telling me nothing I ain't been doing for days. I've been doing it since yesterday. I have went back to a place where I, after sitting under the prophet, oh, I'd come back on my face, brother. i come back on my face with my notepad. I ain't going to show you all my notes because I ain't giving you all my secrets. You know what I'm saying? I'll show you this, though. What's this? But I got this right here. Look here. I got all these notes right here. Boy, that I've been writing here. Look at that. 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 I ain't going to let you read them. Don't be taking pictures. Don't be taking pictures. You ain't getting that good stuff. Yeah, some of it ain't good. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm evaluating. I'm, 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 I'm examining my own call. I'm examining my own, my own office. I'm examining everything in my life. I'm examining. I'm writing. I'm listening. And not with a predetermined notion that it's going to turn out the way I want it. How often do we do that, Pastor Jody? I'm not going to examine my life with a predetermined notion that God's going to line up to what I want and what I think. That's not, that's not dying. That's not, you understand? When I say oh, I'm predetermined of the way it's going to turn out, and he's going to line up with the way I want it. But coming back to a place that, where I surrender again, and I examine, and I'm willing to correct whatever I need to correct, no matter what. And come back to that place where I let it go. Go to Galatians chapter 6 and verse 4. Is anybody getting anything? I know this usually ain't the way pastor preaches, but you know what? I want to be a pastor to you tonight. I evangelize you all the time. I probably got y'all saved more than anything. When y'all get to heaven, y'all gonna say they gonna say he, he gonna he gonna say I got you saved about you know a bunch of times. Got you saved every week. <laughs> Jesus gonna say Derek, you got them saved every week. Why don't you grow them up? <laughs> I said six and four, right? <clears throat> he said, but let every man prove his own work, and then he shall have rejoiced in himself alone, not in another. Let me make sure I got the right scripture here. Okay, I'm going to read the Amplified in this, guys, if you want to read it later. But, but each one must carefully scrutinize his own work, examine his actions, his attitude, and his behavior. And then he can have a personal satisfaction of inner joy of doing something commendable without comparing himself to another. There's a good one for all of us. How many times do we get caught up in that comparison game? All of us. Come on. When you get free from the comparison game, your life will be forever changed, church. Your life will never be the same when you get when you get to the when you when you realize who you are in Christ and you realize that you're an individual personality, you're an individual son or an individual daughter and there's nobody like you. When you get that revelation, and that takes time sometimes. You still, I still get to a place sometimes where I fight that comparison with other preachers and other ministries, and I'm looking at them, and I'm like, my God, they look, it's like every, they touch it and it grows. I mean, hundreds, you know, and, and then sometimes you feel like you're pressing, and you're, and you're doing all this, and it's not doing what you think it should, and, and then you start comparing this to this, and you start looking at yourself, and you, you, you're, you're, you're in this war between, you know, what they're doing and what they're not doing and what God's doing. And you don't see everything behind the closet. All you see is the outward. 
You might see us up here just like you compare yourself to the preacher or to the pastor. Well, if you watched our life every day and every week, you might think different about wanting to be a pastor or preacher. Why do I say that? I'm not saying that. I honor what, God, what God's put in me and the anointing He's given me to steward. But I want to tell you something. My son, Gunner, sat there at the table the other day. We were sitting there, and he come out of his... We just were sitting there, and, and I didn't ask him. But he said, Dad, we was, we was fixing to go to the meeting. He said, Dad, I don't want to be a pastor. I said, really, why not? I'm not trying to force him into that. Never would I. You obey God. Whatever God's, whatever God's leading you to be, that's what you're going to be. But I wanted to know why he said that. He said, because I see what you go through. This is my, my 12-year-old. I've never seen that from his perspective. He said, that's why I don't want to be a pastor. I said, really? He said, yeah, I see what you go through. And I don't want to be that. Are you hearing me? 12-year-old kid. Sometimes we see the highlights of everything. You see the highlights of people's life. You see them used in great and powerful ways, but you don't see the price that they paid. So don't compare yourself. You look at Facebook, it's going to lie to you. You look at, you look at YouTube, you're going to see everybody's highlight reel. You'll see ours if you look on there. I mean, we, of course we ain't going to show you in there when we're knocked down and when we're in there in boxing gloves and boxers, you know what I'm saying? And we're fighting it out, not literally, but we're not going to show you that on video. We're not going to show you when we get up and on the wrong side of the bed, when we blow it, you know. So you're going to see all these highlight reels, and if you're not careful, you get in and look at everybody's highlight reels, you're like, my God. You just throw up, throw in the towel because you think, my, my, I'm never coming up out of this. I mean, my life's messed up. <laughs> see, it's a deception. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a smoke screen that's not real. It's false. Not that, not that those pictures are, and not that we're trying to do that, but we, we show you the good things, and because, of course, you're not going to put everything out there. But what I'm telling you is, as your pastor, sometimes you get to looking at those things, and you get to looking at all these people, and you're like, my God, everybody's life's perfect. But it's like, my, 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 why, why is mine not like that? I pray in everything. I mean, I believe God. I trust God every day. I believe Him too. And we can get these false perceptions of what, what it's really like, and we get this false persona of what a Christian life looks like, and and what a minister's life looks like, or what 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 ministers go through, you know. Uh, John John uh, John Maxwell said this. He said a lot of people come up to me and say, "John, I'd love to do what you do." He said, "Really? Will you do what I did?" He said, "That's the question I always ask them when they ask him. I'd love to do what you do, and here's what he says: Would you do what I do?" Would you do what I did? You want to do what I do? Would you do what I did to get to where I'm at? Well, Jesus, we love to be in your place. Would you do what I did? He went to the cross. He endured the cross. He endured the shame. Why? For me and you. endured it and we believe we believe in the goodness of God and we believe in all that but we also know the reality of of, of walking a Christian life and we, we also know the price that's to be paid and we also know that there is a price to be paid there's a price to pay daily we understand that people will stab you in the back we understand that people ain't going to love you some will and the ones that do will really love you but there's a lot that won't we understand all that. We understand the scars. We understand the knives in the back. We understand all that. But yet we got to forgive and love and keep on going, don't we? That's why when, when she brought that out earlier, I bury in my body. That's why Paul said this, I bury in my own body the mark. He was talking about physically where they had beat him and everything, but he there was more marks than that on him. He said, I've been around false brethren. I've been around this. I've been around that. I've been around all these things going on. He said, but none of those things move me. 
None of those things move me. Why does none of those things move me? Because my eyes are fixed. Say that. My eyes are fixed. My eyes are fixed. What's my eyes fixed on? The commander in chief, the Lord Jesus Christ that has called me into this army. That's what my eyes are fixed on. That's what I'm running for. For the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Praise God. I'm not running after somebody else's. I'm running after mine. You understand what I'm saying? And my eyes are fixed. Where's my eyes fixed? On Jesus. Come on. On Jesus. My eyes are fixed. And my, my only aim, he said, my only aim was to please the commander in chief that has called me into this army. When you ever settle that in your Christian walk, listen, your life is going to be different. Your life is going to be changed because my only aim is to please him. My only aim. I don't care what the naysayers say. I don't care what none of them say. When you get into that place, when you start to get your focus right and you start to get that get in that place right, then no longer can people affect you and hurt you like they did before because love is given without expectation. Love is given freely in that moment. Not with a string attached to it saying, I love you if you love me. Oh, I'm going to do good to you, but you owe me to do good to me. I always say, I won't let that string happen either way. I won't do it with that string attached to somebody, and I'll never let that string be attached to me. Nor will I be the one holding the string either. Well, I'll do good for you. You do good for me. But you owe me. I might not say it, but I've marked it. You know what I'm talking about. See, Christ has called, he's called you to freedom. Say that. He's called me to freedom. He's called you to freedom. He's not called you to be in bondage. He's called you to freedom. Free to serve. Free to love. Free to live. Free to worship. Freedom, liberty, in Christ alone, he took on death. I, can't, I wish I could remember that song, but that song's coming to my heart right now. Fullness, of, I ain't going to sing it because I look dumb, but I don't want to ruin my highlight reel. We on a Facebook, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to ruin the highlight reel here today. Come on, this is good stuff. This is a powerful anointing in here tonight. But we're talking about examining ourselves. Examining yourself. Even, even, even Dr. Barclay, Pastor Barclay always teaches this. He always taught us this in STMTI. He's a military man and I get it. When he talks military talk, I get it. I'm not mili- I've never been in the military, but I get military talk. I can't tell you why, I just get it. Maybe it was because of the gang or whatever I was a part of for years. I don't know. But I get it. When he talks about order, when he talks about saluting and taking orders and following orders and things like that, I get it. I get it. And he always said this right here. He said, when they would come in from a, from a, a mission or they would, they would go out, they would come in and they would, they would debrief. What does debrief mean? They would come and they would sit down together, those that were involved, and they would sit and talk about what went, what was, what went on. Did they accomplish it? Did they miss it? Where did they miss it at? Get each man's perspective of what happened. When you debrief with the Holy Ghost, say, He's in me. He's in me. If you're a Christian, the Holy Ghost is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. If, if you're a Christian... You're born of His Spirit. That means His Spirit is within you. When you, listen to me, when you begin to debrief with the Holy Ghost, debrief with God, it's you and Him together in a meeting, in a closed place, in a secret place. Don't mean you have to go in a closet and close your door, but you're in a secret place with Him. And you, you shut off everything there is, wherever that is that you can get away from your TVs and your iPhones and your, 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 your thing. And you can shut it down for a minute. You can get with Him every day. And you can listen. 
he'll debrief with you. What he'll do is he'll take you over everything that you did, everything that was said, everything that was said to you. And you're, what you're doing is a student in that moment. And you're a student that is being examined by his teacher. And Jesus, through his spirit, is examining you. But it takes you listening, being open, and getting into a place where you can truly hear him in solitude. Now, as you get older in the Lord and you begin to pray in tongues, you know, where it used to take you 30 minutes maybe to get into that place, you can get into it in a minute or two. Because you start to cultivate this life and you start to build this life where every day you start to create this place with Him where you can get to and you can allow Him to examine you and you can examine yourself. He said if you judge yourself, you'll not be judged. When you stop judging yourself or examining yourself, that's when there's greater judgments that come on you. Jesus didn't come to judge the world, Pastor. Watch this. I'm not getting into judgments tonight, but I'm going to teach on that one day. The different judgments for a Christian. Judgment is mercy. You know that, right? Judgment, God's judgment in your life as a Christian is a form of mercy. Why? Because without chastisement, you're not a son. But if there's chastisement, meaning judgment has been brought, I'm not talking about death and eternal hell, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if you push past some things, and, and, and God's showing you and you won't listen and you won't, you won't try to let Him show you and you push past the red lights, you push past all this and all of a sudden something happens. It wasn't God that did it, but you opened yourself up for the devil to do it. And then all of a sudden something happens. Well, that's a form of judgment that says, okay, you could still repent and correct it. I didn't know why I was getting into that. Here's what I want to get into. So, so now I'm debriefing. Means, means that I'm taking time out every day and I'm getting with God. When I leave this pulpit tonight, I'm going to go home and I'm going to spend time with my family. And you can ask my wife, I'm going to get to a place, whether it be in the bedroom, whether it be somewhere in my, clo- in, in my, in my, in my office or somewhere, and I'm going to sit and I'm going to debrief and I'm going to get with God. And I'm going to get quiet and I'm going to let him take me over every word that I spoke. Some of it he'll say that I was wrong. Some of it he'll say that I was right. Some of it he'll say you should have said this. You should have did this. I'll repent where I need to. I'll correct what I need to. And then I've examined myself. Are you hearing me? Is this helping anybody? So now I'm with him and I'm debriefing. If you do that every day of your life, I promise you, you'll judge yourself every day. He said you will not be judged. Watch this. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse number 28. Oh my goodness, this is good stuff. Everybody there? I'm going to read the Amplified. I'll read the King James and then I'll read the Amplified. It says, But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. In verse 28 in the Amplified he says, But a person must prayerfully examine himself and his relationship to Christ. And only when he has done so should he eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Now he was talking about communion here but he was talking about way deeper than just communion because he said this. He said there was many, and he goes on down here, for there's a many of them that eat and drink unworthily and eat and drink in damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. They wasn't discerning the Lord's body. 
Watch this. For this cause, in verse 30, many of you are weak, many of you are sick among you, and many of you sleep. That means many of you have already went on. You've already went on to heaven. Good, your eternal glory, but you might have you you might have missed your you 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 might have not fulfilled your purpose. You might not have fulfilled your days. When God said you could have done so much more, you could have won so many more people to me, but now you're here because you didn't discern the Lord's body. You didn't discern my body. How many Christians do you see today that are not discerning the Lord's house and the Lord's body, which is his church? We're not discerning and seeing it the right way. We're not handling it the right way. We're not handling holiness the right way. We're not handling the Word of God the right way. We're not handling the Holy Ghost the right way. We've polluted the sanctuaries. And you wonder why we're in the mess that we're in. Well, he said there's many of them that just sleep the sleep of death. They're weak. They're sick. They're, they, 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 they've gone on. Why? Because they don't discern. The Lord's body. But he said if you would judge yourselves, you would not be judged. In in the Amplified he says, But if you evaluated and judged yourselves honestly, recognizing our shortcomings and correcting the behavior. Let me read that again. I'm going to look at you. I'm going to look. I'm going to preach on Pastor Jody. Watch this. And if you evaluated and judged yourself, ourselves honestly, recognizing our shortcomings and correcting our behavior, we would not be judged. Watch this, verse 32. But when we fall short and are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined by undergoing His correction so that we will not be condemned to eternal punishment along with the world. You remember what I was talking about? Judgment? You remember what I was talking about? Punishment? Why? It wasn't to hurt nobody. It was to save them. Why does the Christian go through that? Because he's disciplining us by undergoing correction. He's correcting us. And if you be without chastisement, you would be without correction and discipline. You're not a son anyway and you need to be saved. That's why he said, Behold, you're going to behold and see the reward of the wicked. You looking at them and you thinking, oh, they're they getting all that, they're they, they blinging, blinging and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Just, just wait. If they don't get born again, just wait. He said, you're going to watch, you're going to behold, and you're going to see the reward. So don't get jealous. Don't think they got it all together. Don't think they got all that and this and, and, and they doing that. And, oh, I see them. How's them godless people prospering like that? How are they doing all this? How, he said, don't worry. You're going to look and you're going to behold. You're going to see the rewards of the wicked. Not, if they don't repent, they don't get saved. You're going to see the rewards. The saints are going to witness it. He said the saints would judge the angels. Do you realize that? That we're going to judge the angels? I heard it broke down that we're going to judge the angels to see if the angels that was assigned to me in my ministry done what they were assigned to do. The angel you have with you which I believe every person is assigned an angel. We call it a guardian angel. You're assigned an angel in your Christian walk and your life that you're going to judge that angel. I believe that. He said the the angels will be judged by the saints. I'll show you the scripture later. Most of you know how many of you read it. The angels will be judged by the saints to see if they've done what they were supposed to do and what they were commanded to do concerning you. That's why I acknowledge the angels. I acknowledge the angels that's in my ministry. I, ex- I acknowledge the angels that's with me. Why? Because they're ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who are heirs of salvation. My God, is anybody getting any of that? See, we come into a place like this to cultivate our faith, to know that you're not alone. To know that when you walk out there every day and you're praying and you're, you're believing God and you're in your mission field and you're on the evangelistic field and you're in the marketplace, that you know what? That you're not alone. That you've got help. That you've got God's working for you and He's not against you. Come on. Is anybody happy about that? Anybody excited about that? Come on. 
Amen. Y'all being quiet too. I'm going to close. I'm fixing to bring it to a close right now. So when you fall short and you're judged by the Lord, you're judged. We are disciplined by undergoing correction so that we will not be condemned to eternal punishment along with the world. Are you hearing me? I want to close with this right here. Examine yourselves. Examine your life. Close the doors. We claim to be Christians. Yet a lot of times we live in open rebellion to God. And we wonder why there's so many things happening in our life. It's because we live a life of open rebellion. Sin. I'm just saying. If you'll examine yourself. And examine your walk daily. And listen, this is something that was brought to me this weekend that I want to remind you of. Sometimes we look at the sin of the outward sins of the flesh, fornication, adultery, things like that, which are sins of the flesh, and they are very homosexuality. Yeah, that's a sin. Yeah, it is. And uh, let me help you all with something on there. Uh, all that's a sin. I'm not just pointing one out. I'm talking about all that stuff, sin, fornication. Yeah, it is. You ain't married and you're sinning. Yeah, you're having sex, you're sinning. Yeah, you are. That's a sin. God ain't okay with none of it. He's not okay with it. You still married to somebody else. Come on. We got people. Come on. I'm not talking. I'm not pinpointing anybody. I'm just saying I'm talking to the internet and everybody. See, we got to examine and correct some things. Now watch this. Now watch. But what about sins of omission? We don't talk about these sins. Oh, this is this hitting home here. I'm preaching on me now. I'm talking about sins of omission. I'm talking about sins when you know to do good and you don't do it. I'm talking about a sin when you know to do the right thing and you don't. When you know to, to give a helping hand and you didn't. You know to be in the house of God and you wasn't. You know to be in your assigned place and you wasn't. I'm talking about knowing to do good and didn't do it. That's a sin. That's one of those sins of omission, though. That's a sin you wouldn't see outwardly necessarily, but that's a sin inside. That's a sin that'll, that'll, that'll start to harden your heart, that'll start to affect you in your Christian walk. It'll start to harden your relationship with God. It'll start hindering you from hearing from Him. When you was out and He led you to pray for somebody and you was like, no, I'm too busy. You was in a store and He said, go over there and lend a hand to that lady. Lend a hand to them right there. Oh, I got too much to do. I've got to go here. Well, what are you doing then? Disobeying, that's omission. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Come on. I know what I've done it many times. Go witness to them and how oh, well maybe later. Lord send somebody else. I gotta go. I've done it, I've done it before. I've got in there and prayed for somebody else to come because I've got too much to do. Can you send somebody else, Lord, to them and tell them I told you to go? See, it's those small foxes that spoil the vine. It's those small things that start to hinder your relationship with God. It's not always the big ones. We always look at the big ones. Well, I'm not doing that. Well, I'm not sinning. I'm not committing adultery on my wife. I'm not doing that. I'm not stealing. I'm not smoking dope. I'm not doing none of that stuff. But how many times did God lay it on my heart to go over and lay hands on somebody at a store or go on to lend a happy hand or to give an offering somewhere or to sow a seed or to give food to somebody that was hungry? How many times did God say that? Did God move on me? to do that and I went against it you know what I did right there I was a, that was a sin to me because I knew to do good and I did not do it I was created with it I was presented with an opportunity and I did not take it so how many of those how many of those times did we sin when you realize these things are keys in your life to keep fire burning in you for God these things keep fire. He said, go and lay hands on the sick. Heal them. Preach the gospel to every single creature. Your testimony is how you overcome. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony is how you overcome. How many people need to hear your testimony? My testimony ain't like theirs, but it's your testimony. 
I got to tell my testimony this week, and guess what he said? I got one better than that. I said, really? Let me hear it. He said, I didn't even say that. I just looked at it. He said, I got one better than that. He said, I know a guy that thought he was Jesus. I said, you know, listen to me. So, so now I start to look at him. I was like, really? He said, yeah, and it gets better. He said, and he had another man that he knew that thought he was Jesus. He said, and then they got together, and he said he was Jesus, and he said he was Jesus, and they looked at each other and said, both of us can't be Jesus. <laughs> it gets better. This is true. This guy's got a big ministry, a deliverance ministry. He really thought he was Jesus Christ. Then he met another man that thought he was Jesus. And they looked at each other and they said, well, you can't be Jesus if I'm Jesus. And he said, well, you can't be Jesus if I'm Jesus. And then they both met Jesus and realized neither one of them was Jesus. And they both got saved. Dude, I laughed so hard. I laughed so hard. And I thought, man, that is the best testimony I have ever heard in my life. They thought they were Jesus. <laughs> huh? Oh, they were sellies, really? Oh, they were sellies in prison. That's even better. They both get into a cell and they both think they're Jesus and they realize that they can't both be Jesus. And they both encountered him and they got saved. And I thought that's the best testimony I've ever heard in my life. So examine yourselves. Examine. Stand with me. Stand with me. Stand with me. All over the house. All over the house. Let's get some. Let's get some music real quick. Let's get some music real quick. <clears throat> I want to open up the altars right now. I feel this by the Holy Ghost right now. I feel this. Are you still online? Yeah, we're gonna close online. Listen, love you guys. Appreciate you. Share this video. Jesus' name.